Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for continuing to watch. One of the things that I really enjoy about doing the videos is getting surprises. So um, I recently published the M600S a video, and that's a pen I bought from Bobby on Etsy. So in the package was this. And it's a very simplistic cloth pen sleeve with a nice closure here, a little bit of a, of a leather-like cord. You take it off and it, it opens up like any other type of sleeve. Push the pen out and we'll see the pen. So when I first saw this, I go, very interesting. Simplistic shape. Is it wood? Is it ebonite? It took me a while to really decide. And I'm still in a little bit of indecision. But the more I look at it, the more I appreciate kind of like the really subtle design elements of this pen. It could be a one-off handmade uh, that Bobby commissioned but it just has what appears to be a nice wood grain pattern and those lines are just really nice classy you know reminiscent of some of the stuff that, that was popular on vintage you know and same material here in in the barrel the cap unscrews man it's a good almost three turns and we'll see a very generic number five size nib but it's the kind that I like because it has that little upturn at the end wouldn't really call it a food day but it, it certainly from the way I enjoy writing works well with with my writing style nice kind of block threads there but it still takes a while to uncap the pen it's very, very light, as one you would expect from wood. Small section, which is not to my favorite, but you can get used to it. The pen feels really good. That surface just is unique, which again is, is a property that, you know, ebonite, hard rubber has, and also wood. It looks like it would post, and the cap does fit there. And it makes for a proper length pen, but it does not stay. The cap just slides off. I mean, there's no way to actually post it in the way that the uh, cap is machined on the inside. So, you know, you could use it as a spinner, if that was your liking. And as you unscrew the section, you'll find just your standard converter, <clears throat> you know, little spring coil spring agitator in there you know the the nib doesn't pull out easily so i'm just going to leave it alone i did put a little bit of my orange furniture oil on all of the threads and it just really makes them just glide they weren't bad but now they're very very good we need to explore the pen a little bit more, so let's go to a different lighting. And let's look inside the cap. So hopefully we can show you what I see. You know, it has that look like you think it's wood. And there has been some discussion about imitation wood, which to me just doesn't make any sense. But, you know, some people might go through that for a certain look. And as we play the LED light on here, you'll get a little bit of a, of a, a different appreciation of, of this very interesting material and classic design. And Bobby must have been reading my mind because I've been talking about nice classic brown pens. So he sent me one and I'm very happy about that. So let's put some ink in here and see if that bent nib performs as I expect. Well, this is after I've done my research, and this is listed 
by Office Supply Pen, Bobby's site on eBay, as a B5 wooden pen. So um, since this was done after I recorded the video, um, I'm going to insert this into the appropriate space so I can apologize for not knowing what it was made of and not doing my research ahead of time. So I have it being held up by the Buddha to indicate the fact that, um, hey, I'm sorry, but enjoy the video as it was filmed. You also notice that these are pictures from the listing on eBay and they're great pictures. They really bring out the detail, the nice coloring and those nice lines in the cap. So what ink to put in it? I've been kind of trying to use up some of my, I don't know, I never count them, but a lot of bottles of ink. So this is one that I got a while ago. I invested in a number of KWZ inks. I did a review on Iron Galder for a while. So I read that date. It's 2016. So this ink has been around for a while. They do very good bottles. You know, I think it's just a nice ink. They've, uh, I think, expanded quite a bit since I first bought them, but maybe next time I'm at a show, I'll pick up a few more. There's the color card on the Mandarin ink. It's a little bit on the light side, but <clears throat> what iron gall inks do is they have a, an iron component to it that reacts to oxygen in the air and darkens the ink. So it goes down actually a lot lighter than you see on the card. And here's the chromatography before it dries. And again, you can see it's very light and there's just a concentration there at the top of, of some uh, darker colors. You let it dry for about an hour and you get a much different chromatography. But the water resistance to me isn't great with iron gall. In fact, I would and be hard pressed, uh, you know, comparing it to any of the modern permanent inks. It certainly leaves a lot to be desired, but it will leave some permanent residue on the paper. And you can see the colors a little bit more intensely in this dried version. I mean, I'm very happy with this nib, but I must be honest, I did a little bit of a smoothing on it. Um, when I first wrote with it, it was a little rough. The feedback was more than, than I liked, but now it's just right. And the, the flow actually increased from doing the smoothing, which occasionally happens. You know, it's a little bit of a, a bent nib, so the horizontal lines are slightly wider than the vertical. You know, putting pressure on it gives you a little bit more of a line variation, but it's not a nib that I would, you know, use as, <laughs> for that. So the thing about iron gall ink is it darkens over time. So we're going to go back to that after a few minutes and see how fresh ink compares to dried ink. So do I like this pen? Yes, I do. Um... Is it a pen I recommend? Well, I would say that you're going to have to like the pen with all its little foibles. And So how would I rate this pen? I'm going to give it an 8.8. .8. Uh, one check for the nib. Um, I can't give it anything higher than that because it, it is a little bit out of the ordinary, a little bit on the edge, you know. The fact that the cap kind of looks like it should post, but it doesn't. Um, it's a little bit on the small side for that section. Uh, so therefore, it really can't get any higher than that. But it is a very nice design. Uh, well made, and the material just feels nice. So uh, we're going to uh, reach the end of this video. So thank you for watching. I mean, you have some interesting pen experiences. Enjoy putting ink on paper. Um, and we're going to go up here and, and take a look at how the ink compares. So there it's a dry. 
and there's when it first goes down. So it's not a great difference. This ink may have changed a little bit in the bottle for the years that it's been in the bottle, but I, my recollection is when I first used it, it was much lighter and uh, it still ended up being as dark as it does here, but it started out lighter. But that's what happens with certain inks that have chemical reactivity to them that over time they're probably going to change. So we've reached the end of this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed this look at an interesting pen that I'm glad I could show you. So bye for now until the next video. And I like the way it writes.